Hey, it's Pavel from Real Street Performance. Today we have the all new Precision Next Gen 6870 Turbo. We put it on our engine dyno and we have the results to show you exactly what we found out. As Precision continues to expand upon their next-gen lineup, more and more turbochargers are being upgraded from their Gen 2 counterparts to the next-gen units. This right here is an example of Precision's classic Gen 2 6870 turbocharger that's been used in a wide variety of different types of applications. Right here would be the next-gen version of the 6870, rated to now 1200 horsepower versus its 1100 horsepower previous capability. Now things to note right here, the turbine wheels themselves are the same, but on the compressor size, the new wheel technology in the next gen is what allows it to make more power than the gen 2 counterpart. Now both the turbos in front of us are the HP style that feature a four inch inlet and a three inch outlet. For those of you looking to have a smaller frame turbo, they are available in the SCP as well, which would also be a four inch inlet, but it features a two and a half inch outlet for ease of fitment. The turbine housing offerings would be T4 open, T4 divided, or the classic V-band, basically making it a very, very easy to use small frame turbo without going into something larger. While the Gen 2 was able to make 1100 horsepower at its peak max efficiency, and the next gen is able to be maxed out at 1200 horsepower. And for today's test in particular, we'll be running the turbochargers at a boost target of 40 PSI. We'll start the run at that and see how they live up throughout the RPM range. Let's go over to the engine dyno and see exactly how that looked and what kind of power we got out of each unit. When working with the engine dyno, it's important to eliminate as many variables and have as many constants as possible. For this particular test, we're using a Mazworks Billet 2JZ block along with a Stage 5 Mazworks head. For the internals, it's a Brian Crower 3.2 liter stroker kit, and the head also has Brian Crower 276 camshafts. For the rest of the internals, we have Real Street spec pistons and rods, putting the compression ratio at 10 to 1. It's important to know that this specific test will be looking mainly at the spread between the next gen and the Gen 2 6870, and not necessarily its peak power possible. Both turbochargers feature a 1.0 AR back housing by Precision and are being flowed through an RTEC T4 divided manifold. This manifold in particular uses an MVR flange so you can run two 44 millimeter tile wastegates and we're monitoring the boost through two three port boost solenoids. Another important constant to note is the fuel that we're using. We're running one ethanol race 1R which is a 117 octane fuel and it's being powered through a mechanical fuel pump and supporting injectors to make sure we're within its efficiency range. It's important to note that when these tests are done they are back-to-back -back tests under the same weather and same conditions, including things like oil temperature and air temperature as well.
Now that we have the data in front of us from both of those runs, there is something that we need to touch on. Two points actually. This is not the peak power that this turbo is capable of making. We wanted to run these turbos at a safe efficiency range that's able to duplicate the data time and time again, that way we have clean results. Second, the graph that you're looking at is an engine dyno graph and is not to be confused with the classic chassis dyno graph that you might be familiar seeing regular vehicles do pulls with. Now on this particular test, what we're doing is targeting 40 PSI to start with and letting the turbocharger reach its efficiency point to where the back pressure overpowers the boost that it's making. Looking at our data, at redline, the Gen 2 tapers down to 34 PSI of boost, where the back pressure is now at 55 PSI. The next gen in comparison keeps that 37 PSI of boost even at 61 pounds of back pressure. That's resulting in more power. In layman's terms, the next gen is able to perform better at that higher back pressure, thus carrying more boost at the end with that original target of 40 PSI. Better wheel technology in the compressor makes more power. This is extremely important in an application where the racing will mainly occur in the high RPM range. You might be used to seeing things like peak horsepower gain as the main selling point in things like turbochargers. In this case, not only is the next gen making 31.6 horsepower more at its peak, but more importantly, it's making 65 more horsepower at its red line of 8,100 RPM. These numbers vary depending where it's at in its RPM range, and it's important to look at all the data, as you can see a wide area of spread between both turbochargers, since you'll be living in that higher RPM in most racing applications. What does that tell you if you're trying to select a new turbo? If you're upgrading from a 6870 and then you wanna get every single ounce of power out, the 6870 next gen is definitely a clear winner and an easy no-brainer. Now, personally, a couple of us here at the shop wanted to see what the next step up would make with that same engine and at that same 40 PSI target. That being said, we pulled off the shelf a 7275 next gen turbo. This one also released kind of recently and we ran it at that same 40 PSI mark. Do you guys know what happened? Well, let's go and check out that dyno footage and see exactly what it did. So here we have the results and 1200 and nearly two horsepower is 1201.9 out of that 7275 at that same target of 40 PSI. In this scenario with the 6870 test and the 7275 test, none of the turbochargers were pushed to their max efficiency as this turbo is able to produce 1380 horsepower according to precision. And it's something that is able to be maxed out at that level depending on your application. I think this comes out to be a pretty good test talking about different turbochargers and different sizing and I'm excited to see what else we can do on the engine dyno. If there's other tests that you'd like to see us do on the engine dyno, please let us know in the comment section below and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching and have a great day.